Welcome to the Door of Life Church Podcast. Our mission is to share the love of Jesus with the world and believers, to teach them how to walk in victory, and to help them find and fulfill God's plan for their life. If you have any comments about today's podcast, please contact us through our website at dooroflife.org. Door of Life Church, where faith meets real life. Well, again, good morning. Welcome. I'll tell you, it's so good to just gather and worship together in the presence of the Lord and spirit and in truth and just sensing the that supply of the spirit when we come together like this. It's just uh, very, very wonderful. And uh, again, just a very happy fourth weekend to all of you as we're celebrating our nation's birthday. And um, wow, what an amazing country we live in. I'm so glad for the United States of America, for our freedoms, our liberties, so many things that God's been able to do through the vehicle of this nation. And uh, what a great time to remember and reflect and look at all the good things that we have to be grateful for in this country. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started in um, a passage of scripture in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. And it says this, is Hebrew writer says, wherefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you also become weary and discouraged in your souls." You know what? I might cheat a little bit. Is that all right? It doesn't change the anointing for you anymore. It changes it in a good way for me, I can tell you that. All right. Um, <clears throat> praise God. You know, during Hebrews, Hebrews was written in the, in the 60s. Of course, you know, not the 1960s, but the 60s. 60s, the first 60s A.D., and um, it was the time of the Nero persecutions. It was the time of great distress in the church. And, and the church was experiencing a tremendous persecution. I mean, you say what they want you to say, or, you know, they would just, they would fashion a crime unto you and throw you in the lions if you're a Christian. You were kind of a, a scapegoat for a lot of the different things of the day. And so it was a, a lot of really difficult persecution. And, um, so the Hebrew writer, a lot of people think it's Paul, could have been somebody else, I don't know for sure, but uh, just wanted to encourage people going through this kind of crisis and persecution. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Set your gaze on Jesus. And I'll tell you what, I've had the Holy Spirit just quicken that to me. What are you looking at, Ed? What are you looking at? Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the one who began this good work and the one who's going to be faithful to complete it, that focus. But here's the cool thing that we just see in that. Not only do we just look unto Jesus, but it also talks about Jesus. It says, who for the joy that was set before him, Jesus, he endured the cross and despised the shame and has sat down at the right hand of God. In other words, Jesus had a joy that was set before him. We see that passion week and all the persecution and stuff that he went through. And how could he go through that? Because there was a joy that was set before him that gave him the ability to endure the stuff. Because he knew where he was going. He knew what he was doing, his purpose. There was an anchor for his soul, Jesus, that kept him steady. And I love the, the way the message paraphrase puts this. He says, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating thing finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. That's a good way to re-paraphrase that. In other words, he's saying this, you know, Jesus went through a bunch of stuff but he had a joy that kept him steady. We're going through stuff, but we've got a same joy that is set before us. And um, 
you know, this morning, I just, that's really what I want to minister along the lines is, is along the lines of is the joy set before you, the joy set before you, you know, there's three things that remain faith, hope, and love. And in this day, we need all of that. We need messages on faith and the power of God and knowing the power of the Holy Spirit, love and walking in love and, and uh, forgiveness and all that. But I'll tell you, we also need a strong message of hope. And that's the joy that is set before you. There is a hope that's an anchor to your soul. We need all three of those components. But this morning, I want to stir up the joy that is set before you. That it's not just a theological, technical joy that's on a book somewhere in your theology. But to stir it up and just all of us see that set before us. It's a joy that is set before us. You know, I would think sometimes when I was a little kid in school, I know we were going on, <clears throat> it could have been a Friday. You know, we'd kind of go out Friday night for dinner. Or we'd, maybe we're going to go to a hotel that weekend or something exciting. And I'd be in the class, I'm going, oh man, I'm just so excited for this to be, you know, you know, once I get through this class, because I'm going to be going on that vacation, I'm going to be going on that trip. I, I've got this thing that I'm looking forward to, you know, that gives me the grace for the here and now, you know, and I, I just remember that sense of expectancy and excitement as a, as, a, as a kid, you know, just looking forward to something that I knew that we were going to be doing as a family. And, um, and, I, and as I think about that, it's really, you know, what the Lord wants us to have too as we see that joy that is set before us. Are we going through stuff down here? Yeah. People not uh, pleasant and nice and persecution and stuff. Yeah, but there's a joy that is set before us. And so um, this is important to have. Sometimes we've lost this joy because it's been kind of undermined as a little, you know, sweet by and by mentality that Okay, yeah, it's all bad now, but it's going to be good somewhere in the future now. No, we've got authority. We've got power. We've got victory. We can overcome now, also now. But also in the future, there is a joy that we have. The scripture says it's an anchor for our soul. And there's times we need that hope. We need that stirred up. We need to be reminded this is what's ahead of you. This is where you're going. You know, to, this is, you are, you are headed for eternity. You're headed for glory. All right, and so that's what we're going to look at again this morning. And so, again, just calling it the joy that is set before you. And so, as we look at the joy that is set before us, the thing that we got to realize, you know, a big thing that Paul brings out, especially, is to just have this eternal perspective that there's just so much more to our Christianity than the here and now. First Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul says, 19, he says, if we who are in Christ have hope only in this life, and that is all, then we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied. The message says, if all we get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. If I'm here, if, if, if this is about anything other than eternity, we all have much better things we could be doing with our time right now than to be pretending to be spiritual and look da 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 We don't. We got something real. We got the Holy Spirit. We got the witness of his peace, his joy, his grace. And he who believes on him will not perish but have eternal life. It's a life that goes beyond this present time. It's that eternal perspective. My life is bigger than this. My life is bigger than however many years I've got out ahead of me. My life is going beyond that because of the grace of Jesus Christ. He came that we would have, he didn't come to start up another religion so that we could have a gathering like this. He came to get us born again so we could be children of God and live with him forever. To keep that eternal perspective, what's happening today or tomorrow or this week or next week or next election or whatever, my life is bigger than that. My, my perspective is eternal. I got to see that. I got to see that joy that is set before me. I got to see the purpose and the destiny that, that he has out ahead of my life. I, I like um, the Apostle Paul. He said in one place, he said, we're looking for the, the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Paul wasn't lazy in his time and he wasn't defeated. He was productive, victorious, overcoming and looking forward to the glorious appearing of his great God and Savior. So it's not one or the other, it's all of it. Faith, hope, and love. 
We need to be about the Father's business, but we also need to continue that upward gaze. Keep that heart, that posture. He could be coming at any moment. He was looking for, he was looking for, the, the, not the Antichrist, he was looking for the glorious appearing of his great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where his heart gaze was. That's where we're instructed. That's what the grace of God teaches us to have our hearts gaze. And I just want to kind of encourage you to, um, you know, everything you're going through here, flesh, world, and the devil, it's all temporary. It's a vapor. The thing that the flesh, the world, and the devil does not have in common with you is eternity. All this is temporary. All this is a vapor. It's not going to be here much longer. I remember just once just really kind of being in a bad place, being in a dark place, down, and just feeling, ugh. I just can't, I want to, kind of remembering, longing where I was, wanting to get back to that place and going, oh, I want to get back to that place. Oh, just God help me get back to that place, you know. And the Lord reminded me of something very powerful, very simple. We, a lot of us know it. A day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. We've come kind of run the math on the human lifespan. Our lives are about a two hour movie in the spirit. Two hours is about 82 years. So give or take a few minutes. But your lifespan to God, I'm oh, sorry, to God, get a little dramatic here, to God is like a two-hour movie, okay? So you're just watching your, your life unravel in this movie, and you're the star of your movie, and you're the actor, you're the main central figure. You got supporting cast of characters in your movie, but you're the act, you're the, you're the main star of that movie. And... Um, I just down there just going, oh, just, you know, while, you know, we can be. And, and the Lord just said, Ed, it's only been a couple minutes. Well, it's been like, well, you know, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's years. It's been a few minutes, Ed. Just get back, pick up where you left off here. It's like, wow. And I remember just by faith, that's it. And just by faith, grace that forgives, grace that restores, not just getting forgiveness back, but my identity of living for God back, my identity of wholeheartedness for God back, getting that back again. Grace, quick. And I just remembered how, wow, it, this hasn't been that long for him. This is a very tiny little subplot in this movie for him. Just get back up, get back up. The way back is the way it was always there in the first place. It's not like after you become a Christian, you're going to enter through another living way. There's only one living way. There's only one boldness and access, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one throne of grace, and the master is there with mercy and grace to help in our time of need. I just remember thinking, oh, wow. You know, this has only been a few moments in God time. I'm going to get back up, take my identity back, living for God back again. I don't have to fix all this stuff to get back. It's just there. It's grace. It's quick. It's an eternal perspective. I'm a spirit being. I'm only here for a couple hours in spirit time. And I'm getting back up in my race and I'm running it from that spiritual perspective, living for God. So we have an eternal perspective that kind of, that kind of keeps things in a healthy view, you know, so that we don't get bogged down. Not only as far as just being stirred up in the joy, do we have that fresh perspective of, of time. And I do want to this quote. Uh, this is a C.S. Lewis quote. He said, if you read history, you will find that Christians who did the most for the present world were those who thought most of the next. It's since Christians have lar largely ceased to think of the other world, they've become so ineffective in this. You kind of lose the joy that is set before you. You lose the motive, no, you're kind of on a spiritual treadmill, living for God. Well, we're not on a treadmill. We're actually making traction and going somewhere and going toward a goal. And that's where that hope is just such an important thing. I'm going somewhere, all right? And then um, exceeding grace. Exceeding grace is another one of those things that's just, you, you look at it and you know, some of the stuff that's in the word of God, you don't always have a concrete, you know, mental image and perfect picture of it, but God can give you some pictures by his spirit that will bless you and inspire you. Ephesians 2 says this, God has raised us up together. He's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Amplified, he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace. Praise God. All right, thank you, Emily. 
Um, praise God. So he gives us that free grace. He gives us that ability to, you know, this is what's so cool. Of his exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. This is what he's going to show us in the ages to come. You think you've experienced the grace of God and you have to a degree. In fact, he put the Holy Spirit in us as a guarantee of what we were going to get in the future. There is a grace that is for us and with us that is absolutely mind-boggling. Um, the thing that I, that, that's helped me remember, think of this is uh, just being in the fireworks several years ago. I'd see, you know, it was like Abby when she'd be very first taken in the fireworks. She's about four or five. And she'd see a big firework go off and say, wow, that is like the most amazing, biggest firework ever, you know? And then about five minutes later, it'd be something else going, wow, no, that's the biggest firework ever. You know, when we get into heaven in the ages to come, we're going to go, wow, that's amazing. And then we're going to see more unrevealing of his, of his grace. We're going to go, wow, that's amazing. But I can tell you one thing, as a parent, my joy of the fireworks that year was not watching the fireworks. It was watching Abby watch the fireworks. Yeah. And going, wow, wow, wow. When we're in heaven, the ages to come, we're going to be experiencing a joy, but the joy of our Father is going to be watching us watch the glory of his exceeding grace. There is a grace and a love that the Father has for us that is beyond knowledge, okay? We know in part by design. We don't know fully yet. There is coming that day when we will know fully, when things will be unrevealed to us, revealed to us through the, through the ages to come. Glorious time. But there is... a uh, this grace of forgiveness, this grace of I'm forgiven, I'm just standing, and God just forgives me and just wipes me clean and there's nothing I have to do, that's just not natural to our normal thinking. It's forgiveness, it's grace, and we just let that come in. That's a taste of the glory of his grace that's going to be revealed to us. Can my mind perfectly wrap around exactly what that is? No, but he puts it in the book as part of the joy that is set before us. He puts it in there to stir us up and says, you think it's good as far as what you've experienced, the joy of the Lord? Now, man, it's gonna be amazing. Remember that. Hold that before you when you're going through the hostility of sinners and people. There is a joy that is set before you. He loves you, he's with you, and um, praise God, that's all, part of, that's all part of the glory that he has, he has for you. Um, the other thing that I want to look at too, just again, in terms of the joy set before us, and that is what we'll simply call rewards. Jesus put it this way. He said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys nor thieves do not break in and steal. And where, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's an amazing, an amazing <laughs> truth. We can lay up treasures up for ourselves in heaven and nothing can get at them. There's another scripture that talks about in Corinthians how each one of us will stand before the Lord on that day and we will be rewarded according to deeds done in the body. This is, this is part of the joy that is set before us. You are going to be rewarded for the stuff you did down here. And a lot of times you can think, wow, gold, silver, all that stuff. Nah, the, th the cool thing about this reward is it's going to be something that God does just for you. He creates just for you. I like to think, again, our children draw us little pictures, you know, to mommy from, you know, your child. And you see that picture and it blesses you. And it's not because of the value of the paper or the crayon or what you could, you know, there's no monetary. It's because your child had you in mind when they created that for you and gave it to you. They were thinking about you. And that's the exact same way we, we part of the choice that God is going to give you something, a reward that Jesus said to treasure up when you live your life for God. He rewards you. And again, it's not going to be the mineral content of the gemstones or whatever it is. It's, it's going to be looking at it and knowing the heart of the Father had you in mind when he created this for you to say thank you. That's pretty amazing. You know, we think of the scripture, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Yes, there's a well done, but there's also a personal thank you that is waiting on you for the things you do for God down here. 
a reward that he wants to say thank you. And those things don't tarnish. Moth and rust can't get at those. When you've been there 10,000 years, that reward, whatever it is or whatever it looks like, is going to still be gleaming with appreciation from the heart of the Father for you, for the things he did down here. And it's so important to realize that what the things you did down here are not based on the things you get. The, things you, you, the rewards you get up there are not going to be based on the things you get credit for down here. Okay? You know, Julie and I got these Fitbits a couple years ago. And, um, you know, so we always kind of have our little friendly Fitbit competitions as far as steps or calories, whatever it is. And uh, if something happens and a Fitbit dies or we forget a Fitbit and we're going to go running, it's like, oh, you're not going to get any credit. It doesn't count. You don't have your Fitbit on, you know. So, and we know that. We don't, we, you know, we don't get the credit right here, but we know our bodies are keeping track still of every calorie that's burned. Our bodies are still keeping track of all that stuff. But that's the kind of way you got to realize it down here too. You're, not, you're rewarded up there for stuff nobody sees, nobody knows. And even though you're not getting, some things you get credit for down here and up there, certainly. But there's a lot of stuff down here that aren't appreciated, that aren't seen, but it doesn't stop God to whom all things are naked and open seeing every little thing, not only know the hairs on your head, but know every detail of the things that you're doing. Sometimes when you've just kept your mouth shut, you're going to see a reward <laughs> for suffering long and being kind. You know what I mean? Yeah, they don't rack up the points down here in the way that we can see it in a knowing way. But when you walk in love, that blesses, it's like being imitators, imitate your father, you know, being kind and tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. When you do that by faith, that blesses the heart of the Father. That's the ways you lay up treasure is, is the way you live. Our, our lives are living epistles read and known of all men. Those things that we do are the things that just bless. And we got to realize there's stuff you've done you forgot you've done. There's treasure waiting in heaven for you. And it's not like you're comparing treasures or dollars or amounts. It's the, it's the joy of the Father. It's the joy of the Father the Father's love, the Father's acknowledgement, the Father's desire to bless you. It's a wonderful thing to anticipate the waiting of the blessing of the Father, waiting the Father's blessing upon your life for what you did in that two-hour movie. You know, we've got some dark times in our two-hour movies. We've got good times, but praise God, this is where we're learning to grow and live and finish strong and have a good, strong, fruitful movie that just lives it out for the glory of God. But there's a reward. There's stuff waiting on you. You know, that, that's, that's part of the joy that is set before you. Again, God's, God's thank you. And then the other amazing thing, too, is just the joy of family. You know, the Apostle Paul said, For this reason I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. One family, two places. I've got family here, and I've got family there. Most of us do have family on earth and in heaven. And that's going to be another reality of heaven. You're going to be reunited with your family in heaven. That's going to be a joy. I remember when my mom passed about seven years ago, she, you know, I just remember tucking her in, saying good night, and, you know, I love you to my mom, or mom telling me she loved me. And I had no idea that would be the last time I'd ever see her. That's the last time she'd ever be awake. And she slipped, you know, off to sleep and then slipped into a coma and then two late, days later she passed. And um, when she did, I, I, the, the song of the, the day back then was, um, was a song called When I Wake Up in the Land of Glory, There Will Be No Other Name But Jesus. And I remember that song playing and thinking, wow, when I wake up in the land of glory, praise God. That's, that's pretty amazing. You're going to wake up in the land of glory someday. And you're going to see family there who are there before you. Really there. Not pixie dust on a cloud somewhere, but the person. Their spiritual being. Fellowship. Communication. With a real person. And um, that's, you know, that's an exciting anticipation of heaven. You know, I've heard it described some way. You know, sometimes when a child might fall asleep in a car. You know? And all of a sudden, the next thing they know, they've woke up in their own bed, you know, because mom and dad brought them to the bed. You know, we don't remember that. All I remember is falling asleep. 
And that's a lot of the way it's going to be like too. When you pass, you're going to wake up. You may not remember falling asleep. You may remember falling asleep, but you're going to wake up in a place. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You're going to wake up present with the Lord in his, in his face, in his glory. Praise God. That's something we have to look forward to. We are going to, we're going to see, we're going to see our family. Um, the other thing that that's out ahead of us is not only that, but we've got a, um, we've got a glorified body. We're not going to go throughout eternity with these bodies. You'll notice these things have an expiration date on them. They can only live for so long unless the Lord comes back, you know, then they'll be changed. But the apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Wow. So these bodies are going to be brand new, eternal, glorified bodies just like his. Oh, you know, it's, we talk about, I know the flesh, putting the flesh under, different things like that. This body is dying for a reason. It's because of the condition, the spiritual condition of the fallen body. But it's the last enemy to be put under. It's the last part that we experience. The physical body is going to be changed. You know, your, your body fights you, right? You want to do what's right, but then evil's present with you. And you don't do those things you know you should do. There's coming a day when your body will never fight you again. Your body will be in perfect agreement with the Holy Ghost and the new creation on the inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit. You got the, Holy, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome this flesh. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus can put to death the deeds of this body. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus can cause you to have victory in the here and now over this body. But I'm just saying, there is coming a day when this, by grace, by grace, you're going to not only be born again on the inside, but by grace, you're going to get a new body. And it won't fight you. And your ability to just be in perfect sync and walk in love and be who you are on the inside, the new creation on the inside of you being perfectly reflected on the outside. There's coming a day where you're going to have that. He put it in the book so we would know that. To encourage us that we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God that we may be fully equipped. We need this. To, to be stirred up that this is coming. This is part of our, this is part of our future. Praise God. Um, and then just what I'm calling the joy, we'll just say Jesus' face. The one we've been perceiving all these years. Uh, Revelations 22 says, and every curse will be broken and no longer exist for the throne of God and the Lamb of God will be there in the city. His loving servants will serve him. They will see constantly his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They will never need the light of sun or lamp because the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign as kings forever and ever. I know to our natural mind, this sounds like fairy tale stuff, but it's not fairy tale stuff. It is absolutely truth. It is right there in the word of God that we're called to stir ourselves up that there's a joy that is set before us. The one I've been perceiving all these years by the Holy Spirit, thinking, is that him? Maybe not peace, no, guiding, all that. Sometime in the same way my spirit will be in perfect sync with my body, the Spirit of God will be looking face to face with the one who's been giving me promptings all these years. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he'll live in you and he'll lead and guide you into all truth. He'll take the things of mine and he'll show them unto you. So the Holy Spirit is amplifying what's coming through Jesus. And that one day we're going to see him, we're going to see him face to face. We're going to look in the face of the one who died on the cross for our sins. The one who loved us and gave himself for us. Very powerful. That's, that's part of what's in our future too. And then finally, again, one of the powerful things to just, to really think about is the joy of forever forever with God. Revelation 21 says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem 
coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. That's authoritative. This isn't pie in the sky. This is true and faithful. It is written. Imagine the, the, the celestial city coming to a glorified earth. This earth is going to be renovated. This earth is going to be renovated by fire. The earth is going to be redeemed and glorified. In the same way, the, the curse will be removed from the earth. Do you realize your eternity is very physical? It's not, again, it's not pixie ducks in a cloud. Eternity is, is very much like today without the flesh, the world, and the devil. It's all glorified, but it's physical. You're going to be on a physical, glorified earth with a physical, glorified body, having physical contact with people you love. It's physical. It's ultimately coming full circle back to this. God created it this way in the first place, physical. And redemption comes all the way back there. Heaven right now is a, it's like the blue room or whatever, the green room or the blue room. It's that temporary space until Jesus comes back. The saints that have gone before are with them, but they're going to come back with them. And ultimately, this is going to be renovated. This is going to be all brand new physical. And we're going to see that day when that, that city comes out of the celestial sky on this glorified earth with our glorified bodies. You know, I've, I've thought about this in maybe in a little comical way, but you know, Paul Harvey was a believer. Now, I'd like to think the Lord is going to give him one more, one more shot as that celestial city is coming down and saying, now you know the rest of the story, you know, because that is the rest of the story. That's the hope that's set before us. And like Paul said, he said, man, persecutions and afflictions await me, but none of these things move me that I might preach, that I might finish my course with joy. Why could he finish his course with joy? Why did the hostility of sinners not move him? Because he was finishing his course with joy. He saw through it. Jesus could see through the suffering of that Passion Week. In fact, when he was in the garden with his disciples, he said, now restore to me, Father, the glory that I had with you before. He, he was seeing through that. In fact, when Judas went to betray him, he said, now the Son of Man is glorified. He could see through the suffering to the glory. He could see through that. Praise God. I'm just closing with the final scripture. This is the Apostle Paul of the Romans. For I consider that the sufferings of this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. Praise God. There are some things that you can compare for purposes of contrast. He said, this is one of those things that isn't comparable. I heard, I heard somebody once say, let's have a closest to the sun contest. Let's line everybody up and the tallest person wins because they're closest to the sun. Well, congratulations. What, 93 million miles or whatever that is. You know, it's just not a big deal. And it's kind of like this. If you put the flesh world, the devil, next to the glory, nah, it's not worthy to be compared. What's out ahead of us? And it gave those early church disciples and leaders courage for the day, courage to endure the cross, despise the shame, because there's something so much better that's out ahead. Praise God. Amen. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the joy that is set before us, that there, is, there are good things out there, that this life is just, it's so temporary. It really is a vapor. Help us, Lord, to remember that. Just to remember, Lord, that you are with us, you're for us in the here and now. It doesn't change. But that there is a joy set before us. And I pray that each one of us can see that. That we can see it in our mind's eye, Lord. That we're not doing this in vain. That Christ is raised. 
And our hope is not just in this life, but our hope is in eternity with you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you said that you did these things so that we could be with you where you are, that you prepare a place for us. Well, Father, we just see that place. We stir it up in our heart. We stir it up in our mind this morning. It's real. Heaven is real. Eternity is real. This eternal life that you died, Jesus, so we could have is real. We see it this morning. We thank you for it, Lord. Rewards, your thank you, our ability to see you face to face and worship you. Oh, Father, there's just so much our hearts long for. We thank you, Lord, for this time this morning. I just pray, Father God, that stirring of the Holy Spirit minister to every heart here. Show each one of us here, Lord, that you're with us, you're for us. And wherever we're at in this two-hour movie, it's just moments to make an adjustment and to walk with you with the full identity, your love and your fellowship and your purpose, Lord. I pray that over each one here this morning. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, you know the days we're living in, there's a lot of messages. There's a lot of different directions. I'll tell you, in my heart, it's going in so many directions. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit that we need in these days to deal with the power of darkness, the power of love, to stay on our game and shine as lights in the world. There's just so many different faith, hope, and love messages. But just finally, ultimately, what stirred up and was just hope. We need it all. We need faith, hope, and love. They all remain. But let that hope stir up in you. It's game over in that sense. When Jesus destroyed the devil 2,000 years ago on the cross, the power of the devil, in that sense, it's, it's academic. In a way, you're, we're taking the knee. We're running out the clock until the Lord comes back. In that time, we're about the Father's business. We're being fruitful. But he did it. And it's done. And there's nothing conditional about this future hope. It's absolutely certain. It's an anchor for our soul. So be encouraged this morning. Let that hope anchor you. Let your mind go there. Let your emotions go there. Let your imaginations go there. It's okay. It's scriptural. It's supposed to comfort you. It's supposed to encourage you and give you the ability ability to endure the stuff we're going through now. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're, we're just going to pray a prayer over our offerings. We've got the basket set up there. Uh, whether you've given or want to give after the service is fine or the various ways that we have to give um, online or text giving or through the mail, whatever. We, it's kind of a different time we're living in. So whenever you've done your giving, if you have or you're going to, we're just going to pray a prayer just representative of our, our giving here um, and to just honor the Lord with these, with these gifts. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for these precious gifts. Lord, that are sown from hearts that want to honor and love and serve you. Lord, we receive them cheerfully in that same heart. And we pray, Father, your blessing on these gifts, Lord, that you will just cause the ministry to go forth, the, the things that you want to accomplish, Lord, through Door of Life Christian Church and through the ministry of every heart here, that you, you cause us to abound, that we can have an abundance for every good work you've put on the inside of each one of us that we have all sufficiency to do that. Lord, we seek first your kingdom in your heart. As we do, we know you add everything we need to us. We give you thanks, Father, for this day. We give you thanks for the hope of our salvation. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ and all he's done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you, Emily, for the uh, umbrella that came in handy. Praise God. And thank you so much for coming out this morning. And um, I didn't know, oh, love, good. It's kind of flying blind a little bit, but we, we finished out about right. But praise God. But thank you so much for coming out this, this morning. And we just invite you to hang out as long as you want, fellowship, and just enjoy the day as the family of God. We're just so glad to see each one of you. It just encourages our hearts. So God bless. Have a wonderful rest of your day.